watching DBS Television and this is the news. In the east region of Cameroon, Garua Bulai, a border town with the Central African Republic, has been welcoming a new wave of refugees from its neighboring country, shaken by a socio-political crisis for nearly a month. There is a significant number of Chinese nationals affected. There are nearly 250 Chinese formerly working with the exploitation of minerals in the Central African Republic who are now refugees in Garwa Bulai, reason why the Minister of Territorial Administration paid a visit to them to bring comfort to Chinese nationals with a donation from the head of state consisting of food and sleeping materials. The socio-political crisis in the Central African Republic has paralyzed the Cameroon border with the country as there are around a hundred trucks loaded with goods and perishable products parked along the border, a situation that is a problem for National Transport Union. Faced with the crisis, all security measures have been taken to guarantee the safety of residents and their property. One of them is the closure of the Cameroon Central African Republic border at Garua Bulai until the resolution of the problem for an optimal security of truck drivers who are the target of the rebels and cause the Cameroonian customs huge loss in terms of revenue. Mina's visit ended with a security meeting with the traditional leaders of Garua Bulai, law enforcement and security forces and administrative authorities of the East region so as to work on ways to maintain order and keep peace in the area. Barely a few days after the demolition exercise that took place Saturday, January 9, 2021, at the airport neighborhood in Douala 2 subdivision, it is all sadness and dissolution as these Cameroonians struggle to pick up the pieces of their lives from these rubbles and move on. Moving on, which will be difficult like this man, says they were notified within 24 hours to quit. A time frame which except for a miracle could not permit anyone to have an accommodation. The leader of the block says they have been on the site for more than 30 years. To him, there has been an exaggeration in the exercise. Such actions only end up radicalizing the people, he adds. À l'extrême nord, c'est pas fini, à l'est, c'est pas fini. Vous croyez que les enfants, tels que vous voyez, l'autre jour, il y a eu des échauffourées là-bas parce que ils ont euh, contesté. The impact of the exercise is far reaching as these children, some of whom are in examination classes, cannot go to school. Such cases get even worse, like this man says, as many of them cannot even lay hands on their personal documents. Painful as it may be, Many are trying hard to accept their new fate after the demolition. Unrest in the Central African Republic over the disputed presidential polls continues. Rebels have forced lorry drivers off the roads, spurring food shortages in the capital. The country's main trading route, the road linking Cameroon to Bangui, is deserted after rebel forces launched a series of attacks last month. The disruption means hundreds of trucks are stuck, waiting to move and translate into shortages for customers. Prices for basic commodities like onions have tripled in the capital's biggest food market. Air transport is costly but remains the only solution as the disruption continues. The government has pledged to provide army escorts for lorries starting this Tuesday. In Mali, an ECOWAS delegation led by former President Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria has arrived to Bamako. The delegation is composed of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ghana and Dr. Kasi Jean-Claude Brou, President of the Commission. The goal is to discuss with the transitional authorities, the political class and the civil society organizations of the current transition. 
being in Mali since Monday, they had consultations in two main areas, take stock of the transition since the coup d'etat of August 18 and discuss preparations for the presidential and legislative elections next year. For the overwhelming majority of the party representatives present, the transition is not yet in track. The most virulent criticism comes from the M5, a movement which contributed to the downfall of former President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Before the Economic Community of West African States, emissaries, the M5 representatives asserted that the military rules of the country and the civilian leaders only unveil crescents. Their visit to Mali is also in prelude to a summit of heads of state of the Economic Community of West African State on the transition in Mali to be held on January 23 in Abuja, Nigeria. Over to Guinea, in detention for several months for illegal gatherings on the public highway, Umar Sila, alias Fonike Mange, of the National Front for the Defense of the Constitution, was sentenced to one year in prison on Monday, January 11, before the court of first instance in Mafanko. The head of the government against constitutional changes had started a hunger strike for 14 days before his case was scheduled, according to his lawyer, May Mbeer. The Guinean prosecutor's office on Monday declared a year in prison against the activist for Nike Mange, accusing him of being guilty of disturbing public order. The judgment was due to take place on January 14. For Nike Mange is a member of the National Front for the Defense of the Constitution, a collective that has mobilized for months against the candidacy of Alpha Conde for a third term. The protest, which has been severe repressed several times has left dozens of people dead. According to Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, the weeks before and after the October 18 presidential election saw the arrest of hundreds of people. The Facebook accounts of Uganda's Information Ministry have been shut down as they are being accused of using fake accounts to target public debate ahead of presidential elections. Residents in the East African nation would cast their votes on Thursday, January 14, 2021, to elect a new president and parliament amid a tense and bloody electoral campaign. 76-year-old incumbent president Yoweri Museveni is facing a stiff challenge from the pop star turned politician Bobby Wine. Although Museveni is currently ahead in the polls, he sees Bobby Wine as a threat to his 34-year rule of Uganda without any opposition since 1986. Last week, police officers confronted Wine as he announced his petition to the International Criminal Court to investigate allegations of torture and other human rights abuses in the country. A key part of the petition to the ICC lays in the request to investigate alleged acts of torture, mutilation and murder of civilian protesters. Out of Africa, Russian President Vladimir Putin has brought together the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan for the first time since a war last year over the Nagorno-Karabakh region in an effort to resolve problems that risk undermining the deal that ended the conflict. A Russian brokered ceasefire agreement in November halted the six-week conflict between Azeri and ethnic Armenian forces looking in territorial gains for Azerbaijan. But tensions persist with low-level sporadic violence, prisoners of war still held by both sides, and ambiguity about how a prospective transport corridor through the region will work. Putin said the ceasefire deal which saw Moscow deploy peacekeepers was being implemented without serious incident on the talks had been useful.
The atmosphere at the talks was frosty. Pushing Yan and Aliyev did not shake hands, only exchanging curt greetings when they sat down in the Kremlin opposite Putin. For Russia, the latest conflicts highlighted the rising influence of close Azeri ally Turkey in the South Caucasus, an area Moscow traditionally seeks as its own sphere of influence. But by brokering the deal and getting Russian peacekeepers on the ground, Putin has thwarted a stronger Turkish presence for now while expanding Moscow's own military footprint. The U.S. House of Representatives has launched an article of impeachment against President Donald Trump for his position in inciting his supporters who stormed the Capitol building last week. The impeachment resolution, which began on Monday, states that President Donald Trump addressed a rally shortly before his supporters mounted a deadly January 6 assault and said he made statements that encouraged and foreseeably resulted in the lawless actions at the Capitol. The rarely used 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution allows the Vice President and the Cabinet to remove a President deemed unable or unfit to do the job. The violence unsuccessfully aimed toward stopping Congress from certifying incoming President Joe Biden's electoral win led to not less than five deaths and 25 arrests associated to domestic terrorism. U.S. lawmakers warned of the damage the president could still do before Biden is inaugurated. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo would travel to Brussels this Wednesday for meetings with NATO officials, the State Department reported. The trip is expected to be his last as the top diplomat of outgoing President Donald Trump. Taking place on Wednesday and Thursday, Pompeo would meet NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg and Belgian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister Sophie Wilmers, the State Department added. The visit follows the assault on the U.S. Capitol last week in which thousands of Trump supporters stormed the building, forcing members of Congress, who were certifying Democratic President-elect Joe Biden's election victory, into hiding. Stoltenberg called the scenes in Washington shocking and called for the outcome of the elections to be respected. Many other world leaders, including those of top U.S. allies such as the U.K., also expressed shock at the attack on the heart of American democracy. And about 30 world leaders met for an online One Planet Summit on January 11 to discuss climate change and the preservation of biodiversity and ecosystems. France hosted the one-day event that had been scheduled to take place in the southern French port city of Marseille in 2020, but was postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. French President Emmanuel Macron announced that the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People, which was launched in 2019 by Costa Rica, France and Britain, to set a target of protecting at least 30% of the planet by 2030, has now been joined by 50 countries. During a video address at the conference, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said that countries around the world need to protect biodiversity and natural habitats by acting, warning that the consequences of environmental degradation would soon be irreversible. That's how we saw it on today's edition of the news. Thanks for watching and do well to stay with us until tomorrow.